Dwayne is actually over with Nate um, working on fencing again this morning, which left me to all the chores uh, this morning. But just wanted to give you guys a couple of updates. Um, so our sunflowers and cowpeas that are over here next to the chicken run are actually doing really well. Those are doing really well over there um, next to the chicken run. We have that taller fence around it and it doesn't seem like birds are really messing with them. So they're doing really well. The area where the pigs were lost over here that we planted out. The grass is doing really well, but the birds, the quail especially are getting in there and pretty much have eaten all the cow peas and sunflowers over here. But the grass was so heavy that we still have a lot of that left. We have a couple of spots where you can see they really got into, ate everything to the ground. So this week we did get some of the scare tape. Bought that on Amazon and are trying that. It seems like it's helping a little bit, especially when it's windy out here, the noise is keeping them off, but they're still getting in here when it's not and still eating them. So hopefully at least the grass will survive. I think there's, I saw maybe three cow peas left in there. All right, so I'm gonna go check on Dwayne. Um, he is still over here with Nate. Um, he did have to stop. We had a couple of visitors come in this morning. Uh, Jeff and Julia, thanks for coming out if you're watching this, um, as well as Bill and Sherry came by as well. So I got to spend some time with them walking the property. But Dwayne is back over here doing fencing and so I'm gonna go take him his hat for one because it's starting to warm up. It's I think just after 9.30 now this morning, we usually try to call it quits by 9, 10 o'clock at the latest during the summertime, but they're still going and see how far they got with the fencing on the east side. So you guys have been with Lori this morning because Nate and I have been busy on the fencing. You guys will see here, we were actually working on it last Sunday. We got that whole side done, which is our north side fence that we share. And now we're working on the east fence. So the challenge we had here is there's a pretty steep grade running from north to south, which is great from a permaculture and growing standpoint, but from a fencing standpoint, it's a challenge. So we've had to step down because we're using field fencing that's 47 inches tall. We want to make sure that we are flat or flush to the ground, but at the same time, we don't want a super short fence on one end. So we're stepping it down as we go. So the fence is always about three and a half to four feet tall. and closer to somewhere between 42 and 47 inches. We are about two thirds of the way done. We like to be done at this point, so I don't need to wear a hat, but uh, we're still going, so the hat's on. So I'm back here on the back part of the property and we actually had someone request um, an update on the pecan trees. So I just wanted to give you a quick update on those. Uh, we did have the four pecan trees that we had put in the ground this um, winter and two of them never came out of dormancy, but the two that did, I'll show you how they look now. Those two are actually doing very well. Um, we haven't had any problems with anything eating the leaves of these, thankfully, um, like we have with the mulberries back here. Um, and then while I'm back here, I'll give you a quick update on one of the mulberries. This one, uh, we had four, four or five leaves that were left on this tree from um, being eaten by the ground squirrels or prairie dogs or whatever they are out here. We've been spraying the trees once a week with uh, fish emulsion and cayenne pepper. So that's been helping um, with them not being attacked. So I'll let you see the growth on this after being down to like five leaves. So we're just gonna have to stay on top of spraying it, um, keeping an eye on it to make sure that they don't come back and start getting all the new leaves so we don't lose them. So thankfully, uh, they're all coming back and we haven't lost any so far. Just walking back from the back part of the property and walking through the 
West Orchard and noticed something on our blueberry tree. I'm gonna show you guys. We try to pull all the fruit off this, this year also so that the trees can focus on um, growing. And we actually have some blueberries that got left on it. Looks like the birds got to this one here. So I'm gonna have to pull that one and go show Dwayne. I think there's another one hidden back in here too that I'm gonna leave him. So I may not tell him about those. Over there this morning, cutting those posts down. I've hit this, had this Ryobi circular saw for, I don't know, five, 10 years, something like that. Cut a lot of wood with it and we cut a bunch of posts with it last week, but I was halfway through the first post today and fried this thing. So um, for woodworking and light stuff, it's fine. For heavy stuff like cutting metal, it's not good. Now, I'm a DeWalt guy, so having my Ryobi break down like this means one thing. And if you enjoy tools as much as I do these days, you probably know what I'm replacing this with. Let's just say it's not gonna be green this time. It is way past our uh, proverbial bedtime here as far as shutting things down on the farm, but there's a couple things that we ran into. So as you guys know, we deal with rabbits and ground squirrels here eating the trees. This is our honey mandarin. This is actually the very first tree we planted on this farm. It's doing fantastic. It's pushing out new growth right here. And we had cut this down just because it's it wound up kind of branching or doing horizontal branching down a little bit low. So we wound up cutting this hardware cloth down from three feet. Unfortunately, the rabbits are getting really hungry and they started taking off some of the new shoots. I'm pretty confident it's rabbits versus ground squirrels only because I know that a cottontail can put their feet up here and this is about where their head would be. And this is exactly where they took off these new shoots. And then they of course wound up not eating them. So I know this is not a bunny's favorite thing to munch on, but they do eat these as you can see. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna remove this smaller cage. We had uncovered the pomegranates because we wanted to give them some space to grow. They're big enough, I think they'll survive a bunny onslaught, but this guy definitely won't. So we're gonna take two of our three foot cages, put them together and give this a much wider cage to hopefully keep the rabbits away. And of course, if we can make this wide enough and we still keep losing these, then we know it's ground squirrels versus rabbits. So we're gonna go ahead and knock that out. For those of you guys in Arizona, paying attention to the weather, this week we've got some really, really hot weather. Not surprising, it's June. We have some 115 degree days in front of us here in Whitman, which means you guys in the city are probably 120. One of the things I wanted to point out is the low quads. So I'm gonna step back this way. I'm gonna give you guys a close up, but the low quads are actually doing really, really good heading into what it will be probably the highest temps that we're gonna see this year. That's usually the case in June. You know, we hit those 120 degree marks in June usually not normally after so and it's super super dry but uh, take a look at how this loquat's looking going into this period so these aren't out of the woods by any means as far as the weather is concerned i do still have some concerns with these but i'm starting to see new growth pushing out here at the graft point which is really good to see and Still a little concerned about these tall, really highly grafted trees, but uh, we'll have to see how these do, especially as we get here through the hottest, driest parts of our weather here in Arizona. So we're over here in the palm fruit section, and this is one of our Waddell pears. We get these trees from Reed at RSI Growers. I don't know that anybody else has them. I call them his pear tree. 
and you can see it's just beautiful as usual you know reeds trees do fantastic for us here you can see i'm just under six feet tall i'm on mulch so it's a few inches lower and it's over a foot taller than me so i'm guessing this is somewhere between seven and eight feet tall now we had talked about the way we wanted to do these pear trees and that we wanted to keep a central leader because the challenge that we have is getting pears ripe into the fall because of the hot weather that we have and all the bird pressure. So we're gonna be doing a central leader which means the tree is gonna remain tall like this as opposed to cutting it low. So a couple things, the first one is that it was blowing over in the wind and a single stake wasn't working. So we're double staking the tree so just a simple um, tie wire with some old hose on either side of the tree, the way the wind blows, typically this direction, and then of course if, it, if the wind changes a bit, it can still kind of compensate for that. But you can see it can also still move in the wind, and that's very important when you're staking your trees because that's what helps to solidify the roots. That movement forces them to grab onto the dirt and continue to grow. We have a very, very long trunk so at this point, what we're thinking is we probably don't need to have this large cage on here anymore. So what we're gonna do instead, we have these that we found on Amazon. So it's basically a two inch diameter corrugated type plastic material. They're four feet long, which is gonna be probably a bit longer than this section here, but we can always cut them just a bit. The goal right now, I think for the most part, rabbits can't really reach these first scaffolding branches up here. They're about three feet off the ground. And all we really wanna do at this point is protect the trunk so that they don't actually chew on the trunk and potentially girdle the tree. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this cage and we're gonna replace it with this guy. We have about three and a half feet to protect the trunk. I think that's gonna be plenty for our rabbit pressure and these should do just fine. And then of course, the second part to this is it's protecting the trunk so that we don't need to paint it constantly here over the summer to keep it from getting sunburned. So these look pretty good. We are testing a lot of things here through the summer as far as what we can get away with when it comes to planting and growing things when typically we wouldn't. So. What you have here is you have our summer beds. We have them basically just planted out with cow peas. That's essentially what you see here now. And they're doing pretty good. I mean, we've got several that are doing all right. Remember this soil really doesn't have much of anything in it. This particular bed, the only thing we did with the cow peas was just to put down some fish emulsion when we first planted the seeds. Shy of that, we're just watering it every day. Now, one of the things that we do know that we can actually plant really throughout the summer, believe it or not, is sweet potatoes. So we had a few viewers suggest that last year and we did a really good job of growing sweet potato. In fact, I'll see if I can find it and link the video for you here where we gave one of our final updates and you'll see the bed looked fantastic. Now we planted that sweet potato in August and we harvested sweet potatoes in November. So you can truly plant these anytime. So about a week ago, we had some sweet potato slips that we planted in the bed. Now we did plant them in the evening. So keep in mind, this was June. We had days at about 103, 105, and we planted at about 4.30, 5 o'clock in the evening. The following day, we had a perfect looking small sweet potato, which you could probably see here. So now there's two. There's a small slip planted here and a taller slip planted there. These have been in the ground now for about a week. And you can see middle of the day here, we're already pushing about 100 degrees and it looks fantastic. 
So really excited to see how well that sweet potato is doing. Not really much of, of a surprise, but it's doing well. And we want these to really fill this bed and give some ground cover to these cowpeas as they continue to grow. And of course the cowpeas are just there for nitrogen anyway. For those of you who haven't grown sweet potato before, I wanna show you the steps shy of the planting as far as how you can take a regular sweet potato that you buy from the grocery store and get it planted many, many times over. We're here in the farmhouse and I have a couple things in front of me. Now, what I have over to this side here is our slider. So that is south facing. So keep that in mind as we're talking about this process that you're gonna to wanna to use if you wanna do this yourself. So I have two different sweet potatoes. We have this one here that's actually from our sweet potato harvest last year. And we kept it in the garage, which is nice and cold all winter. And we had this one survive and we've already taken a couple of slips off of this and planted them. In fact, what you saw out there was one of several that came off of this tiny little sweet potato here. So if you're gonna buy these in the store, they don't need to be very big, but a larger one you'll see will perform a little better for you. So we have this one here, and then we have this guy here. So this one we're excited about because it's actually a purple sweet potato. And this one you can see is doing just really, really well. So now what you can do is you just take a few toothpicks, so two to three toothpicks. You're gonna wanna push them through. It doesn't matter whether you're using a ball jar like this or some other type of vessel, but you wanna have something that's got a big enough opening at the top that's gonna allow you to take your sweet potato slide toothpicks into the top of the sweet potato and basically allow it to essentially hover in the water inside the glass. We learned that the hard way. If you, let, if you put the sweet potato in, it it's basically sitting at the bottom. That pressure against the sweet potato usually has a tendency to break the sweet potato on the bottom and you got problems because then all of a sudden it's going to start to just deteriorate and go bad on you. And then you'll see, you're just gonna get a tremendous amount of rooting that's gonna happen off of your sweet potato. So this one here, you could probably see a little bit better. You've got several different, what we call slips, these shoots that are coming up here. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is take these off of the sweet potato once they're about a foot or so tall. This one might be a little shy of that, but I think we're gonna be okay. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use our really, really small Fiskars pruners, and we're gonna cut it off right here at the potato. Now I have a slip. There's no roots at all on here, but that will change quickly. So I'm just gonna take off the first few leaves, which by the way are edible. So you definitely can eat these. In fact, they're gonna go into our smoothie tomorrow morning. And I wanna cut enough of them off so that when I put it into the jar, it's not gonna have any leaves in the water because what'll happen, you can see this one's kind of going in there already, is it's gonna start to decompose if your leaves are in the water. So now all I'm gonna do is just put this in the water just like that. And then after a few days, you're gonna see this start to happen. You can see we've got a lot of rooting coming out of each one of the nodes where those leaves were. And you can see I have a lot of rooting that's going on. Now what you do is you wanna keep these in a sunny windowsill. So again, we keep them in the south facing area that happens to be our slider, which allows them to get nice and green and grow very, very aggressively. Then what we do is we keep them in here and that's typically for about a week or so is what we're finding, especially with it being nice and warm here in the house, between 78 and 80 degrees in the house. These grow very, very rapidly and will root out very quickly for you. And then what you'll do before you plant them is you need to harden these off. And what I mean by that is give them a little taste of what it's gonna feel like being outside. You guys will recognize this area. This is where we keep our brooder. So this, again, we're south facing here, but we're underneath our patio. So it's nice and shaded here all day. These have been outside now. I think this is the third day. You can see they're doing just fine because we've kept them in the shade, but they're really starting to root out very, very aggressively. In fact, you can see that one there is just doing fantastic. So it's got roots coming out of every single one of those nodes and they're getting nice and long. I've got roots here that are probably about three inches long and you can see both of these are actually doing really, really good. So now what we'll do and actually we'll probably wind up doing it tonight is once the sun starts to go down just a little bit and it cools off just a tad, we're going to plant these in those garden beds. Now what you'll want to do is you'll want to plant them so that all of the roots are completely buried below ground level. 
And it's okay if you go a little bit deep. What you don't want to do is you don't want to go too shallow. So you want to make sure you completely bury all of the roots and the rooting nodes uh, into the ground. If you bury deep, it, all it's going to do is just root out from whatever nodes happen to be underneath the ground. And then of course, give it a few months and you have sweet potatoes. I really hope you guys enjoyed that time with Lori this morning. Worked out really good that way. And as you guys are watching today, if you're watching the episode today, then you guys know the plan is to have her start documenting kind of her journey to staying home on the farm full time, which we're both really, really excited about. But of course, part of that is her getting used to spending time with you guys. And I think she's getting better. And um, a little bit of encouragement from you guys goes a long way, which you guys have been giving, and I really do appreciate that. And I really think it's going to make a difference. I've already had a couple of you gals reach out and say that you were really happy to see Lori on camera, and it really encouraged you because a lot of times you guys are out there doing the chores, and you know the guys are doing the grunt work. So uh, you know I, I let her know that, and she sees those comments, and it's very encouraging to her. And it really helps us all because if we can get Lori here full time, we can do so much more here on the channel and share that with you guys, which we're really excited about. Thank you guys for spending time with us like you do every week. We truly, truly appreciate it. It means a big difference for us here. If you guys have any questions or comments, you guys know in the comment section down below. And as always, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you. Get a picture of me throwing it in the garbage. <laughs> shoots? No. Slips? Thanks. I always, I'm like, it's not shoots.